revolution is not a bed of roses. A revolution is a struggle between the future and the past. The ever more sophisticated weapons piling up in the arsenals of the wealthiest and the mightiest can kill the illiterate, the ill, the poor and the hungry, but they cannot kill ignorance, illness, poverty or hunger. There is often talk of human rights, but it is also necessary to talk of the rights of humanity. Why should some people walk barefoot, so that others can travel in luxurious cars? Why should some live for 35 years, so that others can live for 70 years? Why should some be miserably poor, so that others can be hugely rich? I speak on behalf of the children in the world who do not have a piece of bread. I speak on the behalf of the sick who have no medicine, of those whose rights to life and human dignity have been denied. Quality of life lies in knowledge and culture. Values are what constitute true quality of life the supreme quality of life, even above food, shelter, and clothing. I'm not attached to anything. I'm attached to what it feels is my duty, to do my duty. I think that I will die with the boots on. Today, the entire country is an immense university. A revolution is a struggle to the death between the future and the past. I will not speak of him as if he were absent. He has not been and he will never be. These are not mere words of consolation. Only those of us who feel it truly and permanently in the depths of our souls can comprehend this. Physical life is ephemeral, it passes inexorably. This truth should be taught to every human being that the immortal values of the spirit are above physical life. What sense does life have without these values? What then is it to live? Those who understand this and generously sacrifice their physical life for the sake of good and justice, how can they die? God is the supreme idea of goodness and justice. Ignorance is the root of many ills. Knowledge must be the fundamental alley of nations that aspire despite all their tragedies and problems, to become truly emancipated, to build a better world. Sorry, I'm still a dialectical materialist. If people call me Christian, not from the standpoint of religion, but from the standpoint of social vision, I declare that I am a Christian. Humanity can learn from those who have broken their chains. Those who have chained humanity for centuries cannot teach humanity anything. We have the lowest student-teacher ratio and spend five times as much on schools than war the opposite of what the United States does. Explaining why Cuba has the highest literacy in the world. The fact is, when men carry the same ideals in their hearts, nothing can isolate them, neither prison walls nor the sod of cemeteries. For single memory, a single spirit, a single idea, a single conscience, a single dignity will sustain them all. The solutions put forth by imperialism are the quintessence of simplicity, 
when they speak of the problems of population and birth, they are in no way moved by concepts related to the interests of the family or of society. Just when science and technology are making incredible advances in all fields, they resort to technology to suppress revolutions and ask the help of science to prevent population growth. In short, the peoples are not to make revolutions and women are not to give birth. This sums up the philosophy of imperialism. I know that imprisonment will be harder for me than it has ever been for anyone, filled with cowardly threats and hideous cruelty. But I did not fear prison as I did not fear the fury of the miserable tyrant who took the lives of 70 of my comrades. Condemn me. It does not matter. History will absolve me. To the accusation that Cuba wants to export its revolution, we reply, revolutions are not exported. They are made by the people. A revolution is not a bed of roses. Today you cannot talk about a United Nations system. What actually exists is a damnation system over nearly all countries in the world by a small group of powers under the aegis of the United States, determining all issues inspired my own life. Victory has thousands father but failure always find itself an orphan. From Marx, I received the concept of what human society is, otherwise, someone who hasn't tread about it, or to whom it hasn't been explained. It's as though they were set down in the middle of a forest, at night, without knowing which way north is, or south, east or west. Marx told us what a society is in the history of its evolution. Without Marx, you can't formulate any argument that leads to a reasonable interpretation of historical events what the tendencies are the probable evolution of a humanity that has not yet completed its social evolution.